Hi there, this is Sandra, and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. Thank you so much for joining me today. My first project is using this easel that I picked up at my local Dollarama store for only $3.50. Now, it's really cute the way it is, but that's not how I want to use it. I'm going to create a little kitchen sign. So I've decided to take some of this scrapbook paper from Michaels, which is in a shiplap design, and just mark out where I need to cut it. I'm doing something a little different with the paper. I've decided to put some clear shelf liner over it. So when I put my Cricut Design vinyl on it, it doesn't tear the paper. This is my second attempt at doing this and I tore the paper twice because I didn't leave enough sticky off of my transfer paper. So I decided instead of trying to wreck more paper, I'm just gonna do it this way. Using my Cricut Joy, I designed this kitchen is seasoned with love. So I'm going to start with the love down at the bottom, and then I'll add the rest of the words. I'm not going to take you through all of this because if you don't have a Cricut, this will be really boring for you. As usual, I will have the free printable available on my website, which is linked below. And I'm also going to have this available as a decal to purchase. So make sure when you on my website, you go over to the decals tab and check out what I've got available. I'm going to attach the paper onto the easel just using my glue stick. Just put a ton of glue on there, make sure that every area is covered. I'm just going over to the paper to make sure I get the corners and then I'm just going to place it in and smooth it down. To add a little bit more detail and to also camouflage where the paper didn't quite reach the edge of the frame, I'm going to use this burlap tape that I get at Dollarama in a roll and I'm going to cut it lengthwise and then just tape it right around the edge of the sign. The back of the sign is already a chalkboard, so I'm just taking my chalk writer and writing open 24 hours. I thought it would be really cute to say closed or self-service or anything like that, and you could flip it around on your counter to tell everyone in your family when the kitchen is open or closed. Since I have a little heart theme going on with the salt shaker on the front of the sign, I decided to cut this larger piece of burlap ribbon into a heart shape. So I'm just going to cut it in half and then fold it a little bit and then just use my scissors to cut out half of a heart. And that will, of course, give me a full heart. When I'm using my Cricut, I save every tiny little piece of vinyl that doesn't get used specifically for this type of project. I'm just folding over a piece of black vinyl, cutting it into the shape of a heart, and then I'll be able to just stick it right onto the burlap heart. Then I cut out another little burlap heart and hot glued it onto the first two. My idea for these little hearts was to glue them onto the front of the easel, but down towards the bottom so it wouldn't get in the way. For the chalkboard side, I just added a simple twine shoestring bow. You could by all means leave this sign exactly the way it is. I think it's super cute, but I decided to add some of these flat vine pieces that wouldn't stick out too far. Just a few on the top and then a few little white flowers just to brighten this sign up a little bit more. I did the same on the back and I think this turned out really cute. Since I keep talking about my website, I thought I would take you through it very briefly. If you're already familiar with this portion, please feel free to move on. This is where you will end up when you click on the free printables link down in my description box. What you want to do is click on something that you would like to take a look at, whether you click on the words or the image. If you're not already signed in, you're going to be asked to sign up with Facebook, Google, or you can just do your own email and password. If you're already a member, go ahead and click the login button and then choose whatever option you created in the beginning to access everything. Once you're logged in, you can go ahead and click on anything you'd like to see and you'll be shown it in a preview window just like this. If you would like to download it, you're going to 
close this preview window, which will open in a new tab, click the little box next to the words and the image file, and then go to the top and click on download. Now you pro probably will not have delete or move because I own my website, I'm able to do those types of things. So you'll just be looking for a download button. If you didn't know already, I do sell the vinyl decals that I create. You can go ahead and click on the vinyl decals button and you'll see some instructions there as well. Then I've got a bunch of different items and I will be adding this kitchen one that I did today right onto this. So you'll be able to have the option to purchase some of the decals that I create. I'm also going to be doing some of my farmhouse decor. I will be selling it. So if you're interested in any of the projects that I am doing on my YouTube channel, by all means, go ahead and click on farmhouse decor and you will see all the different options that are available. I've only got a few things on there right now, but stay tuned. I will be adding more and more projects as I create them. My second project starts out using this glass candlestick. I already painted it black for a different project, which I didn't like, so I took it apart and then I just used the pieces for other things. I love to repurpose my craft items, especially if it's something that didn't turn out the way I expected, and then I just set it aside and eventually something comes to mind that works really well, just like this project. I'm giving it a couple of coats of my DIY why white chalk paint that recipe is down in my description box if you're interested I'm using this wood round as a top for my candlestick I am making a pedestal of sorts and I'm going to paint this with my mineral colored chalk paint it's actually not mineral from Waverly but it looks very similar to that color this is just some house paint that again I made into some chalk paint I'm just going to give it one light coat and make sure I get the sides this is something that you can find at the Dollar Tree however this one is from Michaels because I could not find any at my local Dollar Tree I've traced out the circle where the glass candlestick is going to fit, and this is going to be twofold. What it's going to do is allow me to make sure that I have it centered when I glue it down, but it's also going to allow me to have contact with raw surfaces. So the plain wood with the glass is going to stick much better than if I painted the whole thing because then the glass candlestick will be glued to the paint and not to the wood. The white paint is dry, so I'm taking my chip brush and I've dipped it and dried it off a little bit in that same paint that I did for the wood round, but I want to dry brush it and just give it a little bit of an aged look. Using the same dry brush, I've just wiped off as much of the paint as I can without washing it because that will defeat the purpose of it being a dry brush. I'm doing the opposite, so I'm taking my white paint and dry brushing on the wood round. I'm using my Starbond glues, the medium consistency super glue and the accelerator to glue these two pieces together. I like using the medium because it's a little thicker and it gives you a little bit more working time. I'm going to give it a really good amount all the way around and make sure that every little nook and cranny of the top of this candlestick is completely covered with glue. Then I do a good amount of the accelerator and then just stick the two together and within about five seconds you've got a super hard hold that's not going anywhere. I like to spray a little bit more of the accelerator all the way around to make sure that all the glue is hardened really well. To add a little bit more detail, I'm taking this ticking stripe ribbon that I got at Michael's and I'm going to hot glue it all the way around, making sure that it doesn't go above the wood round. It will stick out a little bit on the bottom, but you won't even notice that. I'm really pleased with how this one turned out.
My last project for you today is again repurposing something that was already created into a project, but I'm going to do this sugar bowl and I'm going to do the matching creamer this time. So I'm taking the same color. It's actually called mushroom, but it is the one that looks very similar to the Waverly chalk paint in mineral. And I'm going to give this two coats. The first coat, I'm just using this foam brush to make sure I can get into all the nooks and crannies and there's not too many brushes strokes showing. The second coat I'm going to use a super soft brush. Again it's not going to give me a ton of brush strokes. I want this to be as smooth as possible. However because it's sort of going to have that stoneware look or sort of that old croc kind of look it's still going to have some imperfections in it and I'm okay with that. I'm using some stencils that kind of look like Ray Dunn font, some black paint and a makeup sponge to stencil these letters on. I don't want them to be really dark, so I'm using a really light touch. I always start in the center of the word. So for the word cream, the E is the exact center. So I center that onto my project and then I work backwards and then I move forwards on the other side of the E. And that to me just helps me make everything nicely centered. The last thing I'll do is give them a clear coat of matte sealer. I usually use a spray paint, but you can also use Mod Podge and that will just prevent anything from chipping. I really love how they look so old fashioned and vintage. I hope you enjoyed these DIYs today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That helps YouTube notice me more and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad you came. Stick around a while by hitting that subscribe button. That black arrow will tell you exactly where to click. Thanks so much for watching today. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. See you in the next one.